Hi everybody, Niklas Seidloff here. In the video today, I want to describe how we've implemented the page Popular of Collaboration Today. What you see here on this page is the list of links that are sorted by the amount of times readers of Collaboration Today have clicked these links over the last week. Now, um, the readers don't see these amounts, but since I'm logged in as moderator, I can go to the moderation UI and I see that same list and here I can also actually see the amount of times. This is the amount of time or all time clicks and this is the amount of times um, a link has been clicked um, over the last week. So now let me pick one of these um, entries here. Um, let's say this one here, how to set up Domino Designer. Um, as you can see it has currently zero clicks. Now let me find that same um, link here on the page. Here it is. And before I click it, I open um, Firebug so that you can see what's going on here. So when I click this page, uh, this link, um, the page is opened. And also, as you could see here, this is actually directly the link um, to that page, to the news article. Um, but we also catch the event when someone clicked and we invoke um, an Ajax call an Ajax call to a next page called log.xsp and, um, and then we pass in the ID of the news item. That's essentially it. So end users or readers don't see that, but we track this information in the back end. Now, um, um, when I go back into the moderation UI, I won't see that change immediately um, simply because um, this information is all ca uh, cached, as I talked about in a previous meeting. Uh, in a previous um, email video um, and you can see the clicks are still zero but now when I edit any arbitrary um, news entry to refresh the cache and then I go back under popular I should now see this entry here and here it is and the uh, click count has been increased so that works now let me show you how we've actually implemented that so the first thing um, here is the, the log.xsp, um, the X page. And um, right now we are using an X agent, but we are um, thinking about changing that to an RPC call. Again, for now, it's just a simple X page, an X agent. And all we do here is to create a click object. We pass in the ID and the IP address, and then we call a method at click on a variable click cache. Um, so let me show you the um, click class. Um, click is really just a very simple data object with um, the ID, the IP address and date in there. And the next thing here, click cache, is a managed bean that we define in the faces-config file. So this is the JavaScript variable name and this is the actual Java class, click cache. And the click uh, cache class is also relatively simple. Um, the main method and really the only public method here is the method add click, which is called from the X agent. Um, the other important thing here is that it stores a list of or a hash set of clicks. And whenever this method now is called add click, um, the internal hash set here um, gets one click added one click object. So then um, and in the next step we check whether we want to run our code again to make this click persistent. Now we don't want to do that every time someone clicks because um, you know, because we want to avoid um, concurrency issues and also it, it just doesn't make sense we want to save some IO here and really only save multiple clicks together. So our run again method checks a couple of things. One thing is whether, um, you know, one thing we do here is to make sure we only um, save or update these clicks every five minutes. So in the worst case, we could lose, uh, lose these five, um, uh, the, these clicks in the five minutes if the server would crash or go down. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I uncommented this line here so that it would store the new click count directly so that I could show that um, here in this demo. 
Um, so going back to add click, again, we add the clicks object to our internal um, list here. We check whether that code, whether we need to make these clicks persistent. And um, also in order to, um, to avoid concurrency issues here, this method is actually synchronized. In other words, it can only be invoked by one person at a time. Um, so that means that everything within this method should hopefully execute as fast as possible so that no one is blocked. Um, within this method here now, we the actual code to make something persistent is done here in the Java class write cache job. And this class essentially creates an Eclipse job, another thread that invokes the functionality to save these clicks um, and everything happens asynchronously. Um, so now uh, the next thing I, I need to show you here is this actual class write cache job. Here's the class and essentially it creates a Java or an Eclipse job, which is what you can see here. Right clicks job extends um, the Eclipse job here. Come on. Org Eclipse core runtime jobs job. And this is almost the same um, example that I published previously. It's another open source, uh, open NTF project called um, Threads and Job Sample. Um, and in order to run this job here, you need to do some configuration. Uh, you need to change uh, some policies here in java.policies. Right now, you actually have to grant permissions to all permissions because that Java code runs um, or executes in the context of this database. Unfortunately, something like this doesn't work. You can't scope it to only one database, which is what you really would want to do. So what we will do next is to actually take that one Java class that I just showed you with the inner class for the job and put it in an OSGI bundle and deploy it separately so that we can define the permission here on a, on a um, finer granularity. Let me go back now to the Eclipse job class. Uh, I wanted to highlight a couple of things. Uh, so as you remember, we call here the method start and we pass in the um, hash set of clicks. And in this job, we do a couple of things. First of all, we receive these clicks here, um, actually in the constructor. And then we go through all of these clicks and first of all, we remove all the duplicates to make sure that each click is only counted once per IP address. Then we sort all the um, clicks by their IDs. And then we loop through, um, through all of the um, um, use items that have been clicked in the last five minutes. And um, then we do a couple of interesting things here. Um, I want to highlight the two methods restore state and uh, save state. These are um, methods um, or code that we reuse from um, Tim Troconi, who blocked about it. This is the save state and this is the restore state. Essentially what these methods do is to store arbitrary Java objects that can be serialized um, in a single item. So, for example, this allows us to serialize all of our clicks object objects into one serializable object, into this hash set. Um, and we add it into a notes field, an item. And that's it. And then vice versa, um, we can um, say we want to get a serializable version of the Java object um, from a specific field. So those methods um, are the ones we are using here, uh, right here. So first of all, we read all the clicks that had already been done um, in the past. And then we add the ones from the last five minutes with the ones that we just read from the documents. Again, we remove all duplicates. And then we save the state. Uh, in other words, we save all clicks, all cl Java clicks objects in one single field here. And in addition to that, we also store the um, all-time clicks count 
and the clicks in the last week as separate notes fields, um, notes in, uh, number fields. And this allows us to, to have views that can actually um, sort um, documents by their click counts. Um, and just to show you quickly how this looks here in, um, in notes. So this is the document that I just clicked here, I think. Let's see. Yeah, this is the one, how to set up Domino Designer. Okay, um, as you saw in the beginning, it had a click count of zero. Now when I refresh this view, you can see that these numbers one and one show up now. And I can also show this here in the document properties. This uh, is the um, clicks uh, count all time. And this is the amount of clicks last week. And this is this um, one field or item where we store um, all clicks, all Java clicks objects um, here as a serializable in a MIME field. And you can't really read this here, but it's, um, as it uh, tells um, here, it's the whole hash set. So that's a kind of a quick overview how we've implemented the click hash. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for attention.